Hey everyone, it's Cheryl from Teaching Two and Three Year Olds. I am about to start week three of in person after a year of virtual teaching and I'm all ready for St. Patrick's Day. I've got my St. Patrick's Day shirt on, I've got my shamrock earrings, got my little friends. And a year ago I bought this t-shirt because we had this little St. Patrick's Day celebration planned and then school closed and I didn't get to wear it. So it's been hanging in my closet for a year now. I'm wearing it again, we're now back in person. But there was an interesting topic that came up in my Facebook group and it's a topic that I get emails about frequently. So I wanted to address it now while it's fresh in my mind and that's how do I handle centers during the first weeks of school? And my answer is I handle it the same way that I do for the whole year. And that is our center's time is free choice it's anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. I don't monitor who is where for how long. I never have. It never even occurred to me, to be honest with you, to do that. It wasn't until I heard that other teachers did that, I'm like, oh. But I didn't really understand why, to be honest with you, because this system has worked so well for me. And so when the topic came up again last week in the group, I thought I would just quickly talk about why? Now, first of all, the reason why I start the year with free choice centers time is because that's how we do it the entire year. And I have found that however you start your school year, that's how the children are going to want it for the rest of the year. So be very careful about that. I've learned that the hard way. They love routine. They get settled into routine. They want it to be the same. So start your year off the way it's going to be that whole year, and that includes center's time. So I do have a, um, another video that I go more in depth showing you the different areas of our centers, how they're set up. So I will drop a link to that video in this video's description. I also have two posts on my website about it. One is for toddlers, two-year-olds, one is for three and four year olds. So I'll drop those links in this video description as well. I just want to touch on why I have chosen free choice and why it has worked so well. And the reason is, especially with two year olds, if you've spent any time observing how they use your environment, you will notice that they travel a lot. And I know you've said this, and it does bother some teachers, especially new teachers, because they wonder, why aren't they staying there for very long? Because they love to move. They're busy, their bodies are busy. But that's my what I have found works, that's been my experience. And it might be also because I really think about my centers and I make sure that they are hands-on and that they, are a, that multiple children can come in and play. And that's the other thing that I've been asked is, do you limit how many children can be in a center? And for the most part, my answer is no. There are some exceptions. If we do have sometimes the easel, we'll have you know two children, it's very common, two or three children. But if it really starts to feel crowded, I'll go over there and work with them on, let's wait until they're finished. But for the most part, I really don't, they can be wherever they want. And my reason is that I have seen some really, really good um, thought go into how many children can fit somewhere. For example, I'll have a table with a certain amount of chairs at it and they're all being used and one other child wants to come and sit down. And they will go and get a chair for that child. They'll find a way to make it work for that child. Or that child might walk up to an area, start to play in it, realize it feels kind of crowded, leaves and come back later. They're figuring out how this all works. And I don't want to deprive them of this. This is very important for them to figure out space and where they can be. And also, if you've watched two-year-olds, at least this has been my experience, 
they tend to want to travel in groups. We'll often uh, watch them as they travel section by section, center by center in the classroom. They're like little packs. They want to be together. Every so often you'll see some go off on their own, but especially at the beginning of the year, they feel comfortable kind of being together. So that's another reason why I don't assign them to certain areas. I don't limit where they need to be. I don't make them go from center, center to center. And that's been another question is, well, what if they don't, what if they don't go to all the centers? Then they don't. And they're, that one day they might really, really just want to be over at the sensory bin for a long time. That's where they want to be that day. If I do notice that a child is staying away from a certain area for several days, I might see if I can get them engaged, figure out what it is, why they might not feel comfortable in that area. I like to think of my classroom as an environment where they can explore on their own. Again, I'm offering a lot of hands-on activities, a lot of open-ended activities, so that children at different levels can take it where they want to take it. So again, I invite you to check out the posts, the two posts I have on the website, links are in the description, and also my more detailed video showing you the different centers and how I set them up. And I can see that some cars are pulling up, my children are arriving, we're getting ready for St. Patrick's Day, so I gotta go. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.